The honorary degree will now be conferred. Mr. President, will you present the honorary degree candidate, James McEwen? Mr. Chancellor, Dr. James McEwen is a world-renowned biomedical engineer whose talent for technological innovation combined with an entrepreneurial spirit and a profound commitment to the public good has brought great benefit to British Columbia. He earned a PhD in electrical engineering at the University of British Columbia and began his remarkable career at Vancouver General Hospital where he founded and served as director of the Biomedical Engineering Department. Realizing that electronic technologies could improve many medical devices, he formed his first company, Western Clinical Engineering Limited, and subsequently invented a revolutionary microprocessor-controlled automatic tourniquet system, now used daily in thousands of surgical procedures worldwide. And this was but the beginning. James McEwen holds 160 patents for a wide variety of medical devices. As a result of the success of his surgical tourniquet-related inventions, he was awarded the Principal Award for Innovation from the Ernest C. Manning Awards Foundation. With the greatest respect and affection, peers call James McEwen the grandfather of, bioengineering, of the bioengineering industry in, in BC. He has not only founded several companies, but has also graciously shared his knowledge and experience with others. He led the creation of the Medical Device Development Center, a not-for-profit center that encourages the collaborative development of new medical technology. And to help other researchers realize their dreams, he has been a generous investor in new medical technology companies. His goodwill has also touched the broader community. When he was president, of the ALS Society of British Columbia, he initiated an unusual design competition to improve the quality of life of those living with Lou Gehrig's disease. He has also established numerous scholarships to provide educational opportunities to those who might not otherwise have them. And as an adjunct professor at the University of British Columbia, he has monitored graduate students for more than 20 years. And as an adjunct professor in our own School of Engineering, he has given us the benefit of his insight for more than two decades. Indeed, our new biomedical engineering program traces its origins to his sage advice. More recently, he chaired the advisory committee for the Faculty of Applied Sciences, and again, generously shared a wealth of industrial and administrative experience. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of this university, I ask that you now confer upon Dr. James McEwen, the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. James McEwen, by the virtue of the authority vested in me and in the Senate of this university, I hereby admit you to the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Dr. McEwen will be hooded by Dr. Bill Crane, Associate Vice President, Academics, and Ms. Kate Roth, Registrar.
It is with pleasure that I now call on Dr. James McEwen for his convocation address. Well, thank you, Mr. Chancellor and Mr. President and honored guests and graduates, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor for me to be awarded this degree here today. To you graduating today, I know you've worked very hard to earn your degrees over many years, but I hope you can take some comfort when you realize it's taken me 35 years to get this one. I'm especially honored that many of today's graduates are from applied sciences, including engineering, and kinesiology, and from education. I'm told that I can say a few things to you today, but I've also been told that the best speech is one with a good beginning, a good ending, and not much in between. <laughs> so my message today is a simple one. It's about what might await you after graduation if you remain curious and keep learning, if you take every opportunity to be creative, and especially if you always try to do what you love and love what you do. Some of you may have heard of Jean Piaget, a Swiss psychologist who really studied childhood learning and intelligence and education. He said, and I quote, the principal goal of education is to create people who are capable of doing new things not simply of repeating what other generations have done. People who are creative, inventive, and discoverers. I hope that your education at Simon Fraser University has prepared you to do just that, to be individuals who are creative, who are inventive, and who are discoverers, just like Simon Fraser himself, and just like Arthur Erickson, the man who created the physical space around us today. It was mentioned that I'm a biomedical engineer and one of the first ones in this part of the world. I've even been called the grandfather of biomedical engineering. I guess that's true. I, I certainly am a grandfather, but I still feel like a student at heart, trying to always learn, trying to still be creative. Biomedical engineers, for those of you who don't know, apply our knowledge, our talent, and our ingenuity to meet needs that will improve health care. That's what we do. I could have retired, whatever that means, many years ago before I was 40 as a result of some good luck and some good successes, but I chose not to. I still love what I do every day. My life as a biomedical engineer actually began when I was six years old. That's when my father got polio. He was only 30 years old and I was six. So I, fought, I saw my father hover between life and death uh, for several weeks, paralyzed in an iron lung. And for those of you who don't know, an iron lung is kind of a pressurized cylinder that contains the entire body with just the head sticking out and it breathes for you, and it breathes for him. It kept him breathing, kept him alive, while the disease of polio raged on. Well, his life was saved by an innovative medical device of the 1950s, the iron lung. After a year, he left hospital. Yes, he was confined to a wheelchair for the rest of his life, but he was able to resume an active, productive life as a father, as a machinist, and as an electronics enthusiast and my mentor. In fact, many years later, when I was in my 30s, he worked with me and helped me create some of the medical devices for which I am being honored today. So for today's ceremony, I, uh, I asked that some of my most influential teachers be invited to join me to share the honor. For example, my very first teacher, my grade one teacher, is here with me today, Isabel Rose. <clears throat> uh, 
Now, I have to say that's partly to show you that I'm not as old as you probably think I am. <laughs> but as a new teacher, pretty much fresh out of school, she reinforced for me in school what my mother had been telling me all along. So while my father was struggling away in an iron lung in the hospital, she was the first one to show me the wonderful, incredible opportunities that a good education can provide. So thank you. My very first science teacher is here today too, Harold Bombro. He created a lifelong interest by encouraging me to be uh, inventive and to ask questions to challenge invent conventional thinking. Even his, he, he once expelled me from the science club for being a bit too inventive, but that's okay, I'm almost over it now. <laughs> Another of my most influential teachers, Mac Ikuda is here too, the high school teacher, and he showed me by his actions the human side of science and education. He encouraged us always to ask why, why, why not? He showed me that we must always try to discover our own unique passions and talents and pursue them and pursue them to help others. These important lessons were in life were reinforced by my very first professor in electrical engineering, Michael Davis, who's become a lifelong role model and friend and is here today. And if you remember nothing about, my t about this, about my teachers, if you remember nothing else, remember this. They're all here today, so I can't possibly be as old as you think. <laughs> and another thing about an honorary degree, the accomplishments that led to this award are really the accomplishments of many. Teachers, professional colleagues, lifelong friends, and a supportive family in a very special way. You are honoring them today, too. Well, it was mentioned that I have over 160 patents for new medical inventions, and that's true, yes. Some of them never resulted in commercial products. Others were well ahead of their time, but fortunately, some have been successful, far more successful than I ever imagined. A good example that was mentioned is the surgical tourniquet. This all started when I was a biomedical engineer at the Vancouver General Hospital. I investigated an unexpected accident in surgery. A young woman came out of surgery with a paralyzed arm. Now that shouldn't have happened because she was only going in to have a fracture repaired. I found that a tourniquet had been used. Well, I didn't know what tourniquets were. That was a big problem. But I started asking questions, I was curious. I discovered that tourniquets of the time were all mechanical, but my background was electrical engineering. Well, that was another problem. It might have been a problem, but I thought, hmm, perhaps it also presents an opportunity to do something different. I asked more questions. Well, I learned that tourniquets were used all over the world, thousands of times a day, to stop blood flow into an arm or a leg when surgery is done. And I learned that they allow surgery to be done in a very in a bloodless field, a clear, dry field, so it makes the surgery more accurate, more precise, better quality. They minimize the need for blood transfusions and minimize blood loss. They can be used for up to 10 hours like with no blood in an arm or a leg. But everybody of the day knew, well, tourniquets were unreliable, they were inaccurate, and they were unsafe. Everybody knew they caused injuries, they were unavoidable. Everybody knew the injuries could be quite serious. Everyone accepted that, but I didn't. My intuition and my education and my curiosity told me I could probably create something better. I suspected with a little luck I could create something that would completely get around all of the problems that everybody saw at the time. And of course, luck played a big role. After all, I was born in the year the transistor was invented. I graduated in electrical engineering the year the microprocessor was invented. And I got my PhD in biomedical engineering in the year that the first microcomputer was introduced. So there was luck, a lot of luck, a lot of help from many people, and a great education. But I was also to see, able to recognize when I was in the right place at the right time. 
And I did have an opportunity to change the world, to be creative, and to make a little bit of a positive influence on other people's lives. I did, and I'm not done yet. My first patent was filed in 1980, and my last was filed two months ago. So without knowing it, without you knowing it, I've probably affected your lives. Just ask yourself, uh, have you ever had surgery on an arm or a leg, or anybody in your family? Has anyone in your family ever had an arthritic joint replaced? Do you know of any baby born with a club foot? Have you ever had arthroscopy for a sports injury? How about any surgery on a hand or a foot or an ankle? Do you know anyone who's had trauma surgery? Do you know anybody in the military in Iraq or Afghanistan? Today, in more than 40 countries around the world, the innovation I created is used more than 15,000 times a day to help improve surgical safety, to help improve surgical quality, and generally improve the quality of life. So as it turned out, my father's polio and an unexpected surgical accident years later led to an exciting, fulfilling career for me. I'm sure that each of you graduating today will face your own unexpected problems in your careers. But some of those unexpected problems may in fact be great opportunities for you. Opportunities for change, opportunities for improvement, opportunities to help others. So my advice is simple. Remember the words of John Piaget who said, the principal goal of education is to create people who are capable of doing new things not simply of repeating what other generations have done. People who are creative, inventive, and discoverers. I trust that your new degree from Simon Fraser University will allow you to do just that as you begin your exciting new careers. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. McEwen.